Hello you lovely sourdough people. Today I'm going to do another video and actually my last video about sourdough starters. I know I've been doing quite a few before so if you haven't watched any of those sourdough starter videos yet go follow the link below in the description. There's some really lovely uh, videos which actually take you through the step-by-step -step process of creating your own sourdough starter and also troubleshooting your own sourdough starter and maintaining your own sourdough starter. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about whole meal and whole grain sourdough starters because they're actually a little bit different to a normal sourdough starter. When I say normal, I mean a white sourdough starter. Um, I think actually there are some differences which are really important to know which probably will help you get the most out of your bread. So I'll just take you through the steps and give you some of the features of a sourdough starter made with wholemeal flour and how you can look after them a little bit differently to the white starter that you've seen in previous videos. So here in front of me I have my rye sourdough starter. I've actually just fed it so you'll see it's still quite low, there aren't many bubbles going on. But this is the one I use for darker breads and I use a light rye flour for that. Now when you are making a sourdough starter with whole grains or wholemeal flour, we're talking wholemeal spelt, wholemeal rye, light rye, just whole meal flour, any of those whole grains that you use it essentially mean that your starter will behave quite a lot different to my uh, white starter. And that's because the actual whole grains, there's a lot of wild yeast on them. And that means you're actually gonna get so much more activity. You also encourage completely different bacteria to a white starter. So if we're taking this uh, whole meal or light rye starter that I have here, I use the same hydration level. That means I'm gonna add the same quantity of flour to water that I also did in my previous posts about my white starter. So I go with 100 grams of flour and 100 grams of water and the amount of starter I always use to refresh is about the exact same to my previous techniques. All that's different is that your whole meal starter most likely will peak and reach its perfect point much earlier than your white starter does. And that's because first of all there's more activity in there, like I say there's a lot of wild yeast on your on your whole grains so they're not filtered out, they're not bleached, there's nothing else in the flour, it's just whole grains that we're milling and that means there's going to be a lot more activity in your jar. That also means that after about a good three to four hours you will see this thing peaking all the way to the top. It also could mean that your starter will be a lot more acidic than a white milky starter. So we're talking about acetic acid and that's something that will produce this really distinct flavor in if you've seen Nordic breads, really nice dark breads like rye breads, those flavors really come out when you are using whole grains and wholemeal starters. Now I tend to watch my starter very closely if I use wholemeal when you are using it in a warmer country be very careful because it could well develop very very quickly shoot up and then shoot down very quickly again you need to make sure you control your acidity levels and that is by much more regular feedings or storing your starter in the fridge in between bakes i actually tend to do that for my rice starter i saw it at quite a, a low temperature and that's because we're not encouraging those milky lactic acid bacteria, we're actually encouraging the acetic acid bacteria to really form a really nice relationship with our flour. So we're actually okay with the lower temperatures, we don't need the 26 degrees and we're okay with it being at room temperature. It's a really nice starter to control because it's quite resilient, so my light rye flour is completely easy to manage and completely easy to control, even if I leave it a couple hours too long. I'm absolutely fine with that because it will still rise my bread, it will still work really well. The acidity will produce a lovely flavor. So what do you need to look out for? I would say make sure that you really closely watch when you feed your starter with a wholemeal flour, how fast it actually rises and peaks. Remember that rubber band that I've showed you guys before in the previous videos? Pop that rubber band around, see when it reaches its top point and see when it then falls again. Record the hours and see what a difference that is to your white starter before. What about transforming starters as well? I tend to transform my starters only once. I don't really go back and forth. By transforming I mean can you go from a white starter to a wholemeal starter? Yes of course you can. So at any point you just take off a little bit of your white starter, put it in a new jar, that's how I tend to do it, and then you feed it with that wholemeal flour that you like. Rye, spelt, 
any normal wholemeal flour will do. And you will see within a couple of days it will totally transform into your new wholemeal starter. One thing I wouldn't do, one thing I wouldn't recommend is going back and forth all the time because you are going to completely well, you're actually going to lose control over how your bacteria are evolving in your starter. And so I would always keep it separate, I would keep it nice and clean, and I would only once in a while think about changing it and always keep a little batch back. Now here's a couple words about maintenance and sourdough starters that are made with wholemeal flour need completely different maintenance to a white starter. My white starter usually peaks between 6 and 8 hours and is really, really resilient up to that point. After that it gets really weak, it's sort of used up and it needs to be fed and probably reused very quickly after that. I tend to prefer a young starter with my white starter because I really like those milky flavours. With this one I tend to keep it in the fridge. So maintenance is quite low. You pop it in the fridge 24 hours before you use it, take it out, remove all but one tablespoon give it a good feed and leave it at room temperature. That's all you need to do because you will see these bacteria evolving very quickly. After that, you can keep it on a schedule either um, at room temperature, which means every four hours you will most likely have a peak, or you just pop it back in the fridge after you've used it, give it a feed and leave it in the fridge. It's important to know that your whole meal starter will peak much faster and will also lose its, its strength after quite a shorter period of time than your white starter. So making breads with an open crumb is not necessarily as possible with a wholemeal starter as it would be with a white starter because you have completely different lives with these two cultures of bacteria. So what I tend to do is I use these ones for the darker breads, for the breads that need lots of flavor, for the breads that I like to have a bit of acidity, a little bit more of a strong taste. And I use those in the same ratio that I would also use a white sourdough starter but at a much earlier point in time. So for maintenance I'd recommend keeping it in the fridge and making sure that whenever you do need to use it just take it out 24 hours before. That's all you need to know about wholemeal starters so just really easy maintenance really keep it in the fridge make sure that you always give it the same feed as you would with my white starters use it for darker breads and also watch out for that peak which could happen much much earlier than a white starter and also look after your acidity levels. This tends to be very acidic very quickly and actually the acidity can get out of control quite quickly. So if you ever feel like smelling it and it smells too strong, it will be a little bit stronger than your white starter. If it ever feels like it's too strong, just make sure you give it a nice good feed and refresh with a, only a tiny amount of your leftover starter to give it a really lovely new flavor. That was all about wholemeal starters. I hope you enjoy the video. I hope you also enjoy the other sourdough starter videos. And you guys can now get making some really lovely bread and experiment with your sourdough starters to create some wonderful creations. Thanks guys for watching. Make sure you subscribe to my channel for more amazing videos. And I'll be talking a lot more about bread and making bread in my next videos. Bye bye.